One thing I've seen a lot of people asking about, especially if they're newer to the hobby, is can you use a hydrogen alpha filter with a DSLR? Let's get the telescope out, let's get set up, let's find out. You know, I just did all that and I should probably actually move everything back onto the grass because where I want to aim at, which is up there in Cygnus towards the east, if I move this back two meters or something like that and probably start imaging it a lot earlier, maybe about half an hour to an hour earlier. So, uh, so um, I guess I'm going to move it. Uh, let's talk about the first elephant in the room, the legs. Now I've raised this tripod up so I can see over the fence sooner than later. Normally I image with them all the way retracted. The, there's two schools of thought about this. Some people believe keeping the legs in and all the weight lower increases stability because the center of mass is lower. That's physics. The flip side to this is people who think that if you raise the legs out and it widens the footprint of the mount, that increases stability that way. I normally keep the weight down because I just think of the physics behind it and uh, I'm lazy. So purely this is a means to an end tonight. And uh, it always catches me out just how tall this is. I mean, I'm six foot three and the, the front of the telescope is now above my head. It's strange operating at this height. But you know what, like I said, it's what I need. This. This is my northeast view. So this window right here is what I'm working with for Cygnus tonight. And I think it's going to start being a bit visible around half past 10, 11, I think, in that, in that part of the sky. So this is why I've raised it. Whenever you're doing narrowband at all, doesn't matter what camera you're using, you're always going to run into extra challenges. And that is purely because the nature of a narrowband filter, they cut out so much light and the more sensitive the camera, the bigger the sensor chip, the, the more aperture on your telescope makes that a bit easier. But if you're using like a 72, small 72 millimeter, or 61 millimeter or an 80 millimeter telescope like this, you're cutting out a lot of light. But issues you're going to encounter are focusing issues, especially if you use a Batonov mask, because this cuts even more light out. Long exposure issues, you're going to have to really crank those exposures up. Normally I'd probably use two or three minutes with the DSLR with this imaging setup. I'm probably going to have to go five and a half minutes maybe. Obviously the brightness of your target also impacts this. If you are not plate solving and you're trying to manually find your, your targets, boy is that a problem. I remember doing this when I was doing my California Nebula. I couldn't see anything through the, through the camera loop. I was having to use my guide scope footage to like manually plate solve. Now you can get over all these things with test exposures, longer, like 10 second images, 15 second images, maybe things like that to check your, your framing, for example, especially if you used a framing mask. Focusing 30 second to ISO 1600, something like that should, should put you in a good area. And also another consideration is especially coming into we're like mid spring now coming towards summer it's 6th of may so you know it's getting colder again now but generally the weather's getting warmer camera sensors don't like heat so you gotta keep an eye on your heat as well or else the heat noise is going to destroy your image been there before just take these points into consideration when you're thinking about using an narrowband filter with a DSLR. Now with all those caveats out of the way, go wait for it to get dark, do the product alignment, and then I'm gonna show you about taking pictures with a hydrogen alpha filter and a camera. All right, it's getting a bit colder as you may have noticed by the hoodie and the jeans, but it's about 10 o'clock. It's finally dark enough for polar aligned. It's time to start focusing. And this is the first 
major issue you're going to face. So I'm going to use plate solving to get over to Capella right now. That's going to be my focus star. Of course, you could use any bright star you want. Definitely a bright star. You'd just be doing your star alignment now as well. The biggest issue especially is if you don't know where focus already is, you're going to have an interesting time hunting for focus. So we're finished here. I can already see Capella is on the left hand side of the frame. So we are over. I am not expecting this to solve because it's probably out of focus. We'll go into live view and then manually hunt for the star. All right, so here we are on live view. You can just see it here. And like I said, we want to move it into the middle of the frame. And you might think it looks bright at the minute. I mean, this is with the seven nanometer hydrogen alpha filter on it. Let's put the Batnov mask on now. So we go, Batnov mask. And let's check the screen now. All right, so like I said, Batnov mask. And look, it's so much harder to see. It's got so much dimmer. But you can just about see the, the pattern. Now, I'm only this close to it because I know my telescope and I know whereabouts my focus marks are. Also helps that it's a numbered grid that really does make life a bit easier. But all we need to do now is focus. Like it's, it's quite difficult to see if these lines are in the middle, but they look about there. I tighten the focus, focus a step slightly. And all we can do now is take a test exposure. So 15 second exposure at ISO 800. And hmm, how does that look? It looks like it's still a bit over this way. Make an adjustment and go again. Okay, I'm a bit more happy with this one. It looks more in the center. So we're gonna go with this. So here's a point I wanna get through about framing with a hydrogen alpha filter. What, we, what we're looking at here is the Seder region of uh, Cygnus. Basically it's the star right in the middle of the cross. This is quite a bright area of sky, really. There's, it's full of nebulosity. And even to plate solve, I had to bump this thing up to ISO 3200 doing 30 second sub exposures. And if I take a photo of that now, a 30 second ISO 3200 photo. So this is ISO 3200, 30 seconds. There's barely anything there even if you do the auto stretch, so barely anything there. We've got guiding going, so let's set a more realistic ISO, shall we? ISO 800 is what I normally shoot at. This is the same 30 seconds of exposure at ISO 800. Say there is a beautiful area of the sky, but it's not what I'm targeting at the minute. I'm going to do a series of photos at ISO 800. I'm going to probably so Speaking of that, look at that. Look at that. There is no information. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a series of photos, like 15 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute, two minute, four minute. I'm going to ramp it up like that. And you'll see the difference that it's going to need to be, right? That's doing this thing now. I'll see you in 15 minutes. It's like a cooking show, isn't it? I mean, I have to wait. You don't. <laughs> Here's one I made earlier. So here we start then, like at 15 seconds, like you barely see anything, you can hardly see Seder. Up to 30 seconds, mm, double again to one minute. Right, you can see a bit of nebulosity there. Up to two minutes, it's beginning to pop out a bit more now. I mean, this could be theoretically usable. Up to four minutes, just even better. We're getting a better SNR, signal to noise ratio. And finally up to five minutes. There's not much on the previews here. There's so for Seda, I'd be around four minutes or five minutes, I'd think. So there's one of the difficulties we face about trying to make sure our sub exposures are long enough when using an airband filter, especially with a DSLR. The other issue is framing. So we've gone through focusing, we've gone through sub exposures now, temperature, framing. So what we've done here, let's jump back in. I've made a framing mask for the Seda region. Just put that on there. There we go. Say for example, this was another session, we're coming back to this now, right? Which is quite likely. Or you've done RGB and now you want to add HA data to make a composite. We're in live view now. 
gee, where is everything? Okay, you can see Seda just about blinking it away in the middle there. So you can see Seda just about. What good does that tell you? That's the issue. So you're not going to be able to frame anything here because you haven't got any of the stars around the edges to make your life easier. So I guess what you could do is uh, 10 second sub exposure at 6400. And this is the trick and the main issue, like I keep saying about framing with the HA filter, especially seven nanometers, very aggressive for a DSLR. Wait for it. Okay, so this is a 10 second sub exposure. Mm, you could work with this sub exposure. Let's get rid of the live view. Yeah, here we go. Framing mask, SATA. Yeah, so you're gonna have to take a 10 second sub exposure at ISO 6400. Now this is all well and good, obviously I was already lined up on SATA. If you're, if you're plate solving, yeah, okay. Takes that, aggressive, takes that out of it, especially as long as you keep the rotation the same. But if you're not and you have, have just slewed over it, you're gonna be, move it slightly, take a picture, guess which way is left down up right, or make a, make a note which way you have to change it. And then from there, move it slightly, take another sub exposure, check it, frame a mask, make sure it's right, make an adjustment. So there you go, that's what it's like if you want to use a hydrogen alpha filter with DSLR. Just go into it ready. I do not want to dissuade you from anything, but just be prepared. One, focusing is gonna be a lot harder. Two, framing is gonna be a lot harder. Three, sub exposures are gonna be much longer. You might need to put your ISO up and your sensor temperature is going to be really something to consider. You can have much less signal to noise ratio in your images, so you're going to have to stack more as well. Take more images, stack more, longer integration time. Don't skimp on the darks, don't skimp on the flats, and you'll be able to do narrowband astrophotography with hydrogen alpha. So I hope you enjoyed, I hope you've learned something. Let me know in the comments what have you learned, are you going to be doing it? And show me your pictures as well. Until next time, keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. See you later.